fight racism given the fears and the oppressions they experience living in this country? Um, I think it's a great question. It has to do a vital legislation that would protect the rights of such folk and agitating for that legislation, which is an ongoing project that we need to, I think, all be engaged in. I think those of us who are quote unquote legal, which is a horrible term that we use, you know, to call folks illegal instead of undocumented, but those of us who have the proper papers, quote unquote, really have to be stepping up as allies to folks who are undocumented, just as white folks in general need to step up as allies to people of color, just like men need to step up as allies to women. Because if we have a bias, and we do, not only on basis of color and class and gender, but on the basis of nationality status and documentation status, um, for people who are undocumented to carry that burden on their shoulders alone, whether it's having rallies and demonstrations for their rights, whether it's pushing for the DREAM Act, whether it's um, agitating within a given school or in a given community, if that's something that undocumented folks have to do by themselves, or maybe not by themselves, maybe with others who are documented but who are also in a quote unquote minority status situation, that is to say still on the basis of color or economics, still marginalized, the odds of the system managers, those who operate that system, giving in is going to be less and changing their ways is going to be less because they have that ability to just ignore because of racism, because of classism, and because of nationalism and this sort of bias against the undocumented to ignore those demands. It seems to me that those of us who are documented only because we just happen to be born as a matter of, of happenstance in this country, it's not something we earned unless you believe that somehow our karma in a past life is what allowed us to be born into this country and have the opportunities to come with that, that we have to be standing up and really telling our own immigrant stories in a much more honest way. Because what we tend to do in the dominant group that I think makes it hard for those who are undocumented to be seen as full human beings worthy of the same rights and considerations in this country or any other country as those who are already there is that those of us who are documented or who were born here and think that we're somehow in many ways superior have this narrative that we tell which is fundamentally dishonest. And as long as we keep telling it, undocumented folks are gonna be at a huge disadvantage. The narrative we tell is, your problem is, if you're undocumented, that you broke the law to come here. My family came here legally. We followed the rules. Well, damn fool, the rules were made for you. Of course you didn't, you didn't have to break the law. There was no law keeping European people, for example, from coming here. In fact, the law said that all free white persons and only free white persons could be citizens of this country. And that was the first law that the Congress passed when they, after they ratified the Constitution. It was the Naturalization Act of 1790. And it said all free whites and only free whites could be citizens. So there was nothing to keep Europeans out in terms of laws, and so we need to be telling that story. It's a matter of happenstance, it's a matter of luck. It has nothing to do with what is justified or what one deserves. Not to mention, um, on a philosophical level, the idea that it's all about legality, we need to really expose that as a fraud, right? The reason that people are upset about folks being here is not because they're undocumented, if they're undocumented, it's not yet. Because honestly, if it were about legality, we could, we could fix that problem tomorrow. All we have to do is make a new rule. If you come across the border, there's a checkpoint, you fill out a postcard, you send it in, two days later you have a citizenship. We could do that tomorrow and nobody would be breaking the law. Because folks would wait 48 hours. Like folks, oh, okay, you mean I don't have to crawl through the desert and maybe get shot and maybe starve to death, I can just wait 48 hours? Cool, I'll do that. 48 hours, I'll do it. But no, we don't have a, we, so we could, we could get rid of the illegality of it by documenting folks immediately. But then when you suggest that, people say, well, wait a minute. Because it's not really about the legality, it's about who the individuals are. You know, 40% of the folks without papers are, are, are folks who just overstayed a work or education visa. Nobody's complaining about them in large measure because a lot of them are from European nations who came here, quote unquote, legally. They didn't cross any border, quote unquote, illegally, and they overstayed their time. That's four out of 10 undocumented folks. But that's not who the talk show hosts are bashing. It's not who the politicians are bashing. It's not who people are up in arms about. It's not who they're concerned about. One of the things I'm really interested in pursuing, there's a piece that went out that Carlos Munoz sent out from, uh, from, from uh, one of his listservs yesterday, I think it was, this great piece on um, the undocumented Irish in the New York City area. There's like 40,000, I think 40,000 undocumented Irish immigrants and they're now forming a coalition to push for comprehensive immigration reform that would be more progressive, that would actually try to humanize and Europeanize as well this notion of illegality and undocumented status because they recognize the importance of doing that for all undocumented people. If the face of the undocumented is a face of color in a society where racism against such persons is a huge problem, it's gonna be much harder. So I'm really happy to see these Irish folks stepping up and saying, hey, we're undocumented too. 
and we're contributing to your society and how many are 40 million Irish Americans in this country and they're not going to sit there and hate on undocumented folks when they realize oh you mean there are tens of thousands of us who are undocumented too so it's a very good strategic decision I think to try to also make this face a, a, a broader face of who is undocumented and why they're undocumented and I mean I think we've got to just basically tell our stories more honestly and more accurately I try to tell mine uh, in, in places I think it, it, it helps to sort of make people understand the, the, the how fickle the notion of legal status is because it changes from time to time. I mean, interesting about my, my great grandfather, when he came to this country, he tried to come here uh, the first time in 1901 from Russia. And he had the misfortune of coming into the United States about a week after President McKinley was shot. And a week later, he died. So he, he came into the harbor in New York the very week that McKinley had, had died. So he'd been assassinated. And my great grandfather, because he was on a boat filled with Eastern Europeans, um, mostly Russian and, and Polish. Um, the boat was turned around and sent home because the man who shot McKinley was the descendant of, was the son of Eastern European immigrants. His name was Leon Shalgas, and his parents were Eastern Europeans. So there was this immediate, temporary, but immediate hysteria that gripped the port cities of this country especially, and they turned his boat around and they sent it back, and it took him nine years to be able to save up enough money to come back to the United States. Now, the reason that's an important story for me to tell, and I know that we have others like that in every room, you know, is that what it suggests is this notion of legal or illegal, documented or undocumented. If my great-grandfather gets there three days earlier, he's legal. If he gets there three weeks earlier, he's definitely legal. If he just had come a year later, he never would have been turned back. But he came at this one particular moment when all of a sudden he gets branded illegal by people who, who knew that they could judge his character based on the fact that he was Eastern European. We're doing the same thing now. And I think if we have an honest discussion about just how ridiculously absurd these standards are and what the law does and does not say, and we've got to really challenge, I think, this rhetoric.